We had so much to share about fasteners, we couldn't fit it all in one video. So now we're going to continue our talk as I tell you all about fasteners, part two. First, I'm gonna tell you about tapping your own threads. Many screws use nuts to clamp two components together, but they can alternately be threaded into one of the two parts. Many Animark components come with threads in them, but in rare cases, you may want to create threads on your own parts. To do this, first look up the drill bit size for the tap type of hole for the bolt you want to drill. For example, the tap size for a 1032 screw is 0.159 inches. This is different from the clearance size that you would normally use, in this case, a 0.201 inch hole for a loose fit. Drill your hole with this bit, then get a number 1032 size tap and a tap wrench, and spin the tap into the hole. For some materials like polycarbonate and some aluminum alloys, you can just spin as deep as you want the threads to be, no problem. However, with softer or stronger materials like copper, stronger aluminum alloys, or steel, you will have to spin until there's some resistance, push a little bit further, then reverse the tap and do it again. With some materials, you may even have to fully remove the tap and clean the cut material from it. Next, we're going to talk about thread patch screws and thread locker. Another way to prevent your assembly from loosening is thread locker. Thread lockers purchases a container of liquid and applied as a drop to the bolt threads before insertion and tightening. The liquid hardens and prevents the bolt from being removed as easily. Some screws come with patches of nylon that act in a similar way, but putting them in can be just as hard as getting them out. These are called thread patch screws. Now let's talk about thread forming screws. Thread forming screws have a particular type of threading that allows them to actually create threads on the part they're being screwed into. This only works on certain materials, so be sure that the material you're screwing into is compatible with the thread forming screw. When attaching, you'll face significantly more resistance than normal, so make sure to screw all the way into the part, even past where you think it's too difficult to screw in by hand. Now, let's talk about a different kind of fastener, the pop rivet. Pop rivets can be a useful fastener type, but they're not the same as screws. When you use a pop rivet to join two things, you shouldn't do it with the intent of taking them apart later. Pop rivets are generally attached using a pop rivet tool, which primarily uses either hand power or pneumatic power to expand the rivet inside the hole and remove the pop rivet tail. Pop rivets are regularly used in sheet metal design. Most rivets you'll see in any Mark products have a rivet diameter of 1 8 inch or 3 16 inch. Other important dimensions to consider when selecting a pop rivet are nose length, nose diameter, and overall length. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to remove a pop rivet, there's one method that works better than most. Please note that no matter how you remove the rivet, it cannot be used again. Get a drill bit the size of the rivet diameter. If you don't know that value, try successively larger bits until the following procedure works. If your pop rivets do not have a good center hole in them, left behind by the removal of the tail, grab a center punch as well. Using either the punch or the built-in hole, align a hand drill with the correct size bit straight on with the rivet. Drill into the rivet until you see the head of the rivet disconnect from the rest of the rivet. Reverse the hand drill and pull it out, and the rivet should now be fully removed. Let's quickly talk about riv nuts. A riv nut is a special type of rivet that has threads built into it, so it can act like a nut. Riv nuts use a special tool, but are attached in the same way as a pop rivet. There are numerous other types of screws not covered in this video, like shoulder bolts, set screws, and more, that can fit into many unique situations. If you choose to use a specialty screw, make sure you understand its proper use and its limitations. Finally, let's talk about cross-threading, head stripping, and other fastener failures. Cross-threading occurs when the screw is not placed into a nut or threaded hole properly, and the threads on the screw and the threads you're screwing into cross. If a screw that shouldn't be tight yet suddenly becomes tight after placing it in, you can generally assume that you've cross-threaded it. To fix, simply unscrew it completely and then try again. Do not try to push through resistance in this case. You can damage both sets of threads and make the screw and nut slash threaded hole unusable or unsafe to use. Head stripping occurs when an improper wrench is used or the proper wrench isn't seated properly. This is particularly a problem with Allen type heads, where the faces of the screw head degrade to the point where the tool can slip inside and spin freely without actually rotating the bolt. If this happens, the screw is incredibly difficult to remove, so if you suspect a critical screw will become stripped soon, consider replacing the screw with a new, unstripped screw. Removing a stripped screw largely depends on the situation, but many can be removed by gripping the head with something like vice grips and rotating like you would with a proper wrench. If the screw is in a counterboard or countersunk hold, things can get significantly more difficult. In very rare cases, the head of a bolt can be completely sheared off, leaving only the threaded section of the screw behind. This will again vary by situation, and it is difficult to suggest a primary method of removal in this case, but the vice grips method we talked about before may work. Now that we've gotten through all of that, I've told you all about fasteners. Stay tuned for more informational videos.